Now in this video, I am going to discuss Cushing syndrome. We will discuss Cushing syndrome with the help of a clinical scenario or what is called as a clinical based question. So this clinical based question was recently asked in one of the university exams. The question says a 45 year old woman presented with buffalo hump, round faces, thinning of limbs, prominent abdomen and purple stray and x-ray showed the fracture of the vertebra. The question asked was what's your probable diagnosis? Explain the physiological basis of clinical features in this patient and write briefly about the actions of the hormone involved. So the question is quite clear cut with the help of the clinical features which are given in the question we can easily come to a conclusion that the diagnosis is nothing but it is Cushing's syndrome. Now the next question says explain the physiological basis of the clinical features in this patient that is what I am going to discuss in this video and the next says write briefly about the actions of the hormone involved. So first of all we should find out as to which hormone is involved. So no prizes for guessing the hormone which is involved is cortisol and I have already discussed the actions of cortisol along with the regulation and the circadian rhythm in my previous video go check out that video first and then come and watch this video. So now in this video I am going to discuss basically the physiological basis of the clinical features in this patient who is suffering from Cushing's syndrome. So let's discuss Cushing's syndrome under the following subheadings. Let's try and understand a little bit of etiology then we will dig deeper into the clinical features and then we will go for the diagnosis of the Cushing syndrome. So first and foremost etiology, etiology means the cause, etiology can be ACTH dependent or ACTH independent, ACTH dependent means there is an increase in the secretion of ACTH and this ACTH is coming from which gland, ACTH is coming from the pituitary gland, that means there is some abnormality in the pituitary gland which is causing an increased production of ACTH and this is in turn stimulating the adrenal cortex which is causing increase in the production of cortisol. So it could be because of the tumors of the anterior pituitary gland. So anterior pituitary gland can enlarge because of the tumors and these tumors can increase the production of ACTH which in turn is going to increase the production of cortisol. Now if at all the Cushing syndrome is occurring because of the tumors of the anterior pituitary then that is called as Cushing's disease. Sometimes it can also occur because of the tumors of the other organs which in turn secrete ACTH. Now this is what is called as ectopic ACTH production. So one of the most commonest organ systems, the tumors of the organ which produces ACTH is the lung cancers. There are so many types of lung cancers. So sometimes these produce ACTH which can also cause Cushing syndrome. Then it could be ACTH dependent wherein the cause is not lying in the pituitary gland. Now it could be because of administration of exogenous steroids, maybe the person is on a long term steroid therapy and if that is the case that is called as the itrogenic cause that means induced by the doctor and remember this is the most common cause of the Cushing syndrome. Then it could be also because of the tumors which are arising from the adrenal gland. So tumors of the adrenal gland produce excessive amount of cortisol and it could be also because of hyperplasia of the adrenal gland. So these are the causes of the Cushing's syndrome. Okay next let's understand the clinical features. In order to understand the clinical features we should be very well versed in the actions of the cortisol. I have already discussed the actions of the cortisol in my previous videos. Please go and check that video before, uh, before going into the clinical features. So the first clinical feature which we may get is called as hyperglycemia. So what is the meaning of hyperglycemia? There is an increase in the blood glucose level. This is attributable to the action of the cortisol on the carbohydrate metabolism. Next there is going to be a redistribution of the body fat. Now as far as the action of cortisol on the fat metabolism is concerned, it is usually going to cause lipolysis and generation of the free fatty acids. But there are places in the body where it is going to cause deposition of fat. What are those places? The first is your abdomen where there is going to be excessive deposition of the fat. The second is your upper back and the third is your face. 
So these are the three areas in the body where there is going to be excessive deposition of the fat and in the rest all places there is going to be lipolysis. So now because of this what is going to happen is the person is going to develop a centripetal obesity with abdominal protuberance. Meaning of centripetal obesity itself is there is obesity only limited to the abdomen. Now because of the deposition of the fat he is also going to have a round face or a moon like faces and then he is also going to have a buffalo hump because of the excessive deposition of the fat in the upper back. So all these three clinical features are attributable to abnormal lipid metabolism. This is how we are going to explain the signs and symptoms. Next there is also going to be a breakdown of the muscle protein. Why? Because what is the action of cortisol on the protein? It is going to cause proteolysis. Now because of the proteolysis there is going to be a reduced muscle mass and the strength. So what is going to happen is the limbs or the extremities uh, more so the lower limbs what will happen to the lower limbs because of the reduction of the muscle, muscle mass and the muscle strength the lower limbs are going to become very thin extremely thin. Next there is also going to be osteoporosis I have already explained the action of cortisol on the bone I will once again just repeat it remember that cortisol is going to cause inhibition of the production of type 1 collagen cortisol is going to inhibit osteoblast because osteoblasts are very much required for the mineralization of the bone and cortisol is also going to stimulate the process of bone resorption. Bone resorption means calcium from the bone is entering now into the plasma and one more very important thing is that cortisol also inhibits the absorption of the calcium from the GIT. Now all these things contribute to the development of osteoporosis and remember one of the most commonest bone to be affected by osteoporosis is our vertebrae. So because of that in the above mentioned case that lady was also having a fracture of the vertebrae. Okay, Then there is also going to be a purple stray over the abdomen. Now why does this occur is Basically the abdomen is stretching because of the protuberance and abnormal deposition of the fat. So whenever the abdomen is going to stretch the skin over the abdomen is going to become very thin and the underlying subdermal tissue which is there it is going to break up. Why? Because of lack of protein synthesis and also lack of collagen synthesis. So whenever the subdermal tissue is going to break now that is going to produce purple striae over the abdomen. Next there is also going to be easy bruisability. Why? Because all the capillaries have lot of collagen in their walls. So cortisol is going to cause inhibition of the collagen synthesis. That is why all these capillaries are going to become very fragile. You are going to get very fragile capillaries. So whenever there is a little bit of injury to these capillaries usually which shouldn't produce bleeding. Now this is going to produce bleeding underneath the skin and that is going to result in easy bruisability. Now this is how we are supposed to explain the clinical features. There can be also psychosis, there can be also depression and one more thing is there can be also impairment of memory because of the actions of cortisol on the central nervous system. There these patients who are suffering from the Cushing syndrome they are also prone for infections because cortisol is going to cause suppression of immunity and there could be also hypertension because glucocorticoids also have mineralocorticoid activity and what does mineralocorticoid do? They are going to cause sodium reabsorption. So excess of sodium is going to produce hypertension. Then these people can have these three things that is acne, hirsutism and amenorrhea. These are attributable to excessive production of sex steroids. Okay? So what is going to happen whenever the ACTH levels are more, ACTH is going to stimulate the adrenal cortex. So whenever the adrenal cortex is stimulated, of course there is going to be excessive production of the cortisol. Along with that there can be also excessive production of mineralocorticoids as well as the sex steroids. Now excessive production of the sex steroids can result in acne, hirsutism and amenorrhea. There could be also hyperacidity and peptic ulcers. What is the reason behind this? The reason behind this is that cortisol also stimulates the production of hydrochloric acid from the stomach. Okay, so these are all the features that we are supposed to remember. See, as we are seeing here, there is deposition of fat, uh, fat in the upper back, which is going to cause buffalo hump. 
there is abdominal stretch marks here we can see there is a, a pendulous abdomen easy bruisability and here we can see that the limbs are very much thin in comparison with the abdomen and these people will also have memory loss they are also going to have hyperglycemia red round face and there is also going to be a weight gain so how are we going to diagnose cushing syndrome what we can do is we can measure the midnight serum cortisol levels if you remember i had told that cortisol follows a circadian rhythm and the maximum secretion of cortisol is going to occur somewhere between 4 am to roughly 9 am in the morning so the usually if i take the midnight serum cortisol levels the serum cortisol levels are very less or low at that point of time but if the person is suffering from cushing syndrome and if i take a midnight serum cortisol levels these levels will be higher we can also do urinary cortisol levels even these will be higher we can do a test which is called as dexamethasone suppression test now dexamethasone is a synthetic steroid so whenever i give dexamethasone it has to suppress the acth levels and hence it has to also suppress the cortisol level now if that is not occurring then that means the person is suffering from cushing syndrome okay and we can also estimate to the acth levels directly now coming to the treatment as i have told you in the cause that uh, majority of the causes is because of hydrogenic or administration of the steroid by the doctor now that has to stop if at all the person is taking steroids or it is because of either a pituitary gland tumor or an anal gland tumor so if a tumor is found on the radiographic radiological examination then surgical resection of the tumor has to be done sometimes we also go for what is called as medical adrenalectomy so the essay was 45 year old woman now presented with buffalo hump now we know the reason behind buffalo hump we know the reason behind the round faces we know why there is thinning of limbs, why there is protrusion of abdomen, why there is purple stray. So I can explain all these clinical features and even I, even I can explain as to why this lady is having fracture of the vertebra. So diagnosis is Cushing syndrome. I can now explain the physiological basis of the clinical features in this patient and even I know the actions of the hormones which are involved. So this is how we are supposed to approach such kind of questions and if this uh, video is helpful for you do like do hit the like button do subscribe to my channel and share this video as much as possible thank you